Hello and welcome back. It's Puzzle Time with Sudoku Sleuth, and I'm so glad to be back on familiar territory again with oil and water, this time with a mix of thermos um, as well. And you can see here, Sleuth is taking the temperature of some, I mean, it looks predominantly oil right now, but I can see that there's like a very thin level there. Um, so I'm guessing it is water with oil on top and maybe some sort of exothermic reaction, which is why he's recording the temperature, who knows. But uh, fantastic to be back on oil and water. Now, I'm going to bring up the puzzle and walk you through the rules, but one thing that kind of surprised me when I loaded it, let's see if I can just bring that up again. Can I? Yes, I can. So it claims that it's been out for 251 days, which I think is just bonkers. Because I definitely remember Blobs leaving a comment on the last puzzle saying, you know, the next one will come along in April. And lo and behold, here we are in April with a new puzzle in the series. So that this is published more than eight months ago feels unrealistic. But anyway, let's take a look at the puzzle and the rule sets. So normal Sudoku rules apply. That means place the digits one to nine once each in every row, in every column and in every three by three box. This is all going to be familiar. Digits on thermometers must increase from the bulb end. So if you imagine that these are physical thermometers, then essentially, just like in real life, a thermometer, the digits must increase from the bulb end. So if this is a two, this would have to be four or five. Does, as you can see, I'm not necessarily consistent with the increases. This is a step of two. This is a step of one. Uh, just to be awkward, this is a step of three. What I cannot do is go back down here because this is clearly no longer steadily increasing from the bulb end. We have digits in cages do not repeat. So for example, this cell here, well, under normal Sudoku rules, none of these in the same column could be the same cell. None of these in the same row slash box could be in the same cell, but these two could have been. And that's explicitly saying that is not the case. This entire cage, however many cells it is, looks like seven to me, is made up of unique digits. Last but not least, we've got each cage is either full of oil or full of water. This is back to the oil and water rule set. Now, if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you're going to be very familiar with this. If you're not a regular viewer of the channel, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. I'll make sure I pop it up right in the middle of the screen now so you can go ahead and do so. Right, so each case is either full of oil. Let's go with green. So, um, or is it green? Green is yellow? Green. So it could be full of oil which means it's all even digits, or it could be full of water. Let's go with blue, which means it's odd digits or a mix of both. In all cases, each row within a case is just one type. So it's either oil or it's water in the same row. And oil always floats on water. So even digits will always be in rows above the odd digits in the mixed cages. So if you imagine that this is a mixed cage and I put oil in here, can't have water above it. That doesn't work. What I could do is have a mixed cage where it's four evens or three odds and two evens, but obviously I cannot have oil kind of sinking beneath water. It doesn't make any physical sense. So only thing left to say is if you want to play along, as always, link will be in the description down below for you to do so. And uh, with that said, I'm going to restart the clock, see how I get on. So what I'm tempted to do, given there's so many cages that are more than four cells, I know that there is quite a few cages that are a minimum of that much water. Can't have a five cell cage that is entirely made up of even digits. There are only two, four, six, and eight, four digits between the digits one to nine that are even. So there has to be at least two. I think the seven cage is quite interesting. Actually, these cages are also interesting. That's six cells. That's got to be at least odd. In fact, can't have five even, so these have to be odd. Can't have six odd digits, so these have to be even. I think that is entirely forced. Yeah, I think so. This five cage as well, this is also water. Three odd digits, sorry, three even digits means I'm not going to make five even digits in row five, so all of this has to be odd. And uh, we're up and running, I guess. 
I can see that this cell is almost certainly odd. Um, can I do better? Let's do that seven cage first. So seven cell cage, best case scenario, four even digits, which means that these bottom three have to be odd. Another case is that there is five odd digits, which means the top two have to be even. I mean, I think you could have done that as well with row three. I've already got four of them. That would be five and six. That's impossible. Um, let's keep this going, shall we? Got four odd digits here in box six. These two have to be even. Remember, um, oil floats on top of water. If the bottom is oil, this has to be oil as well. Fairly sure that this is oil because we've got four odd digits. But the fifth one, which is unique because it's in the same cage, also sees this cell. So all five odd digits see this cell. That is even. So I'm just trying to figure out what that three even digits means best case scenario that's the fourth even that can't be the fifth even so these two are for sure odd can i do better so back to sort of my examples oh hang on i've got yeah four odd digits i need a fifth odd digit can't be uh five and six or five and six in here in fact these have to be even this has to be odd Remember, oil floats on top of water, so all of these have to be odd. Got four odd digits in box eight. Can't, I mean, I can make that number five, but I can't make these five and six. So these are even. We can sort of use the same kind of logic that we use in row seven. We've got two even digits. I need two more. If I make this cell even, that's three. Where is my fourth? Whichever one I pick will end up being a mixture of odd and even in the same row in a cage, which is impossible. So that has to be odd. Then one of these is even, one of these is odd. Not sure which one it is. We've actually got five odd digits in row six. All of these must be even. That's four even digits in box four. That's all odd digits. Same row. That's got to be an odd digit. So that's four odd digits. Doesn't tell me anything. In fact, four even digits, that is odd. That makes this five odd digits, so these two have to be even. That's all the evens done in box five. That's all odd. Yeah, I mean, that was also four even, so that could have been seen more easily. Can I color this without trying to put any digits? I think the answer is maybe. Maybe. I think the tricky part is we've got this, you know, one is odd, one is even, and then the reverse is true. One is odd, one is even. So tricky, very tricky. I am giving it a, my best, though, and I think the answer is no. Don't think I can. Um, let's see if I can, if I color them differently. So if this is purple and this is, therefore this will be orange, because essentially we've got either evens or rods, and then that will be the reverse evens or rods to make sure that there is four evens and to make sure that there is five odds. So this purple here would basically make this orange, would make this purple. This purple in here, because we've already got four odds and three evens, the opposite would be here, that would be orange. Got one of each in here. So that's one even, that's two evens, that's three evens, that's four evens. So I've got two evens, maybe three with the orange. I'm not sure I can do better. What else in here? Nothing obvious there. I mean, four odds, potentially five odds, tells me it's unlikely that both of these are odds. That would be five and six. So that is a minimum of even. And then these could either both be even or odd. This, is it purple? I'm not sure it has to be. Did I mean to make this red? I'm sure I meant to make this purple. That's better. 
I don't know if I'm just confusing things by forcing myself to try and actually color all of it. And maybe the right answer is just to leave it for now and actually look at these thermometers, where I think a lot of it is actually forced. So let me show you what I mean, but I think it is actually forced. So if this is a three, that would be five. And whether this is even or odd, you know, best case scenario, this is eight. And apparently I have two digits of the same parity, six and seven, which are not between five and eight. Um, so that's not going to happen. This has to be one. This has to be three. Now, I also think this has to be eight because if this is six, again, best case scenario, this is only four and five, which is a mixed parity and they can't be. So this has to be an eight as well. And I suspect this will be true for a lot of these thermometers. For example, if that is not a two, as in it's a four, that's the next possible digit, that would be six. And then these would have to be mixed seven, eight, and nine, seven, eight, nine, for this to work. That's not possible. So that's two, that's four, that makes it six and eight. So that's eight, that's six. Um, I mean, I could do six, eight, and then nine. Or I could do 5, 7, and then 9. So it's always 9. I strongly suspect that this is always 9, 7, 5, 3, and this is 1 or 2. 9. What else can I do? Yeah, I'm really not sure. No? This has to be one, and then this is either two or three, and this is either four or five. And I think it's the same in here. This is either, well, it's not five. If this is odd, this would be five, seven, and it's not five. So this is even, this is four, six. That four bounces back, that is five and three. So orange, is odd, purple is even, and I can write in the rest. That's six, eight, that's one. That is four and two because of this four. These are now green. I need four greens, I can only see three. That's my fourth. Uh, that has to be a two because I've got all the others. That's a four. These are now all odd. These two cells, they're not eight. That's eight. This is two, six. So I'm just looking around for easy wins. These have to be two, four. Just Sudoku. I'm not necessarily seeing that many, so I may actually have to do a, just a bit more pencil marking than I tend to prefer. Five, seven, and nine. This is one or three. It's not a one. That's forced. This is a three. Three, five, seven. This is one and nine. One, three, and nine. This is five, seven. Remember, this cage is unique, so that's all the odd digits. That has to be a three. This five, seven is in here. So there's another five, seven, and a one. Is that three odd digits? Yes, it is. That's all even. Excuse me. Now it's got to be an odd digit as well, and it's got to be a five. Um, these two have to be the same parity, because, I mean, that's the rule set. And I need two more odd digits. I've only got three. These are odd. That's even. These two are now two or eight because they're not four or six. Got three of them. That could be number four. Any of them could be number four. So I'm not sure I'm forcing anything here. No twos. Sorry, no twos. Not useful. Not two or eight. So four or six. Again, not very useful. We have six and eight down here, which can be inside the cage. There's nothing wrong with that or outside it. So I think this thermometer is probably the thing that's meant to help us in a moment. Just having a look to see if there's anything 
else I can solve without it? I suspect the answer to that is no, I can't. These are essentially the entire even digits. So remember that can't have repeats in the same cage. So this cell sees all three and this cell has to be in this box somewhere. So it's in here. Um, right, let's carry on with this thermometer then. So this is not a one because that would be zero. It's also not three. So this is at least a five, maximum of seven. It can't be nine because what would that be? This has to be higher than five or seven. So this is six or eight. And this has to be lower than one, five or seven. And it's an odd, sorry, it's an even digit. But it can be six. I could do six, seven, eight. So it's still got a lot of options. Not brilliant. Eight has got to be in here because this is not an eight, which means that this is a two, this is an eight. This is two, four, six. That two tells me that this is a two. This is another four, six. This has to be an eight now. Just we've already written all the even digits. Not sure what this is actually. I'm not sure what these are. Has to be easier ways than what I'm doing right now. Uh, two, looking at a four two, how about that? I'm sure that helps at all. I mean, no two here, no two there. Where is two in box five? That's got to be a two, which is unfortunate because it doesn't actually help me with my five, seven, six, eight, but it's progress. We've got to take it. This is two, eight, excuse me. That's got to be a four, six. That's the only place for a two in box six, which gives me a six, which gives me a two. Uh, this is not two or four. It is six or eight. Six, eight pair. That gives me a four in here. Now that helps me resolve and unwind all of these. That's six. Right. This is a six, eight pair. Another six, eight pair. Somewhere in here is a four. It's one of these two cells, which means that this is odd. And therefore to get four evens, that's got to be even. This is another six or eight. Hmm. Two, six, eight. That's a four. That's not the four, that is the four. That's even, which makes this odd, which makes this even to get my four evens in row nine, which makes this odd, right? So that's everything colored. Although surprisingly, not everything is solved. And I think these six eights, unless I'm missing something, entirely possible by the way, that, that would be very normal for me, will probably come down to resolving that 5-7. Interesting. Right. Um, what do I need to solve? Sorry, I'm just taking it all in, trying to see if there is anything obvious without tons of pencil marking. You know how I feel about pencil marking, such as where does 3 go? in column in box four that's the only place for it this can't be three or five in here this is one seven or nine has to be unique this is one seven or nine in here as well because it's not three or five in fact it has to have a one because of this one this is now seven or nine one of these two cells is a five it is not this cell that's a five that's seven or nine there's second seven and nine in here with a one, one seven nine. There is in here another seven nine with a three. You know, I, I did say something about I don't like pencil marking over pencil marking, and here I am just like going to town with the pencil marks. Three in box five. Well, it's none of these cells. That's the only place for it. That is not a three. That's a three. I need a three in here. That's the only place for it. That's the three. Is that all the three is done? looks at one two three four five six seven eight nine yep five seven one five seven not helpful
So essentially, I have another 1, 9 and another 5, 7 in these two cells, which is, and then again, another 1, 9, another 5, 7, another 5, 7. So essentially, I've got another 5, 7 with this one, which means this is not a 7. Huge deduction, huge deduction. Really, really open up the puzzle. Come on, sleuth. What's going on? I don't know if you guys have already like spotted it and you're screaming at your screen saying just sleuth just pay attention please one for example is in one of two cells okay so ones are lining up in these two boxes in the sense that this is not a one so the ones are lining up which means that's not a one that is the one that gives me a seven nine pair this has to be um one five to complete the column, which is really not helpful. I'm not getting it. One five, remember that's in the cage, that can't be a one. So where does one go in row seven? That's the only place for, for it, that's one, that's five, that's seven. This is now another one nine, that's a one nine pair, that gives me seven in here which gives me nine in there, gives me seven in here, right? Maybe we're onto something now. Five, seven, five. This is a one, seven pair. That seven tells me, well, that one also don't, tells me that's one, seven. This is a nine. This is a five. I think we've got it. That seven forces, yep, that eight and six, six and eight. I mean, it could have sort of forced uniqueness or used it to essentially resolve that earlier, but I'm sure there was a, way to demonstrate that the puzzle is unique without having to do so. Right, have I got anything that is making this obvious now to solve? Not yet. This is 5, 7, and that is not a 5, and that's a 5, that's a 7. Neither of these are 7s. 1, 9 pair, that gives me 7, that will probably unwind the entire puzzle now, 7 and 9. That will unwind the entire puzzle now. No. Yes, 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 yes. Unique uniqueness in this cage. That can't be a nine. Already got it. That's one. That's nine. That's one. That's nine. That's one. That's nine. I was going to say if I haven't made any mistakes, but I haven't actually resolved this. This is eight. If I've not made any mistakes, that's a six for the finish. Love these puzzles. I absolutely love these puzzles. And once again, it's another triumph from Blobs. Um. Yeah, like I think if you're familiar with oil and water and you know to try and color as much of the grid as you possibly can, and despite a lot of blindness about kind of uniqueness in cages, you know, still an 18, well, call it 19 minute solve, fairly quick for a two star difficulty rated puzzle. All right, so I hope that you guys have enjoyed the puzzle and the video. And um, really, only thing left to say is. Um, check out you know the oil and water series they're absolutely phenomenal there is a playlist that you can check out right now see you back for the next video bye bye